Hey everyone, it is Danny, and welcome to this another hurricane season countdown video. And so we are 31 days away from the official start of the season, roughly a month because today is the 1st of May. So welcome to this brand new month. It's also my birth month and uh, on my birthday, there will be a spectacular galactic show that will take place. So I'm super excited for that. And I'm going to let you guys know the details about what to expect. Maybe the upcoming uh, countdown video. So maybe next week's video. However, in this video, we will be talking about what is currently going on across the Caribbean region. I mean, there's quite a bit, uh, especially for some Northeastern territories that have been experiencing quite a bit of rainfall due to a trough. So we'll be taking a look at that and what to expect for the rest of the region as we head throughout the week. And we'll take a look at other factors across the Atlantic region, such as the wind shear, the ocean temperatures, and then over in the Eastern Pacific, that ENSO region. And so before I go into details, Okay, so first things first, we're taking a look at satellites and we're seeing that we have that area of very deep convection just to the south of Haiti. So that has been developing quite nicely and if that thing there makes its way on shore, it is going to bring a lot of showers and thunderstorms along with it because the darker you see those colors, especially those blacks and like those white shades within, that is quite a bit of rainfall activity. And other areas of the Northeastern Caribbean, such as the Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, maybe the Virgin Islands and portions of the Lesser Antilles have been feeling some impacts from this. I remember yesterday seeing a video from Guadalupe of all the flooding that was taking place there. But we see that for the South Caribbean, we also have quite a bit of showers going on right there. So things are pretty messy right now. The area is very, very moist and all of these showers are being induced. And so now let's go ahead and see how much rainfall is expected by our different models. And so first First up, we are taking a look at the GFS model. So this is for tomorrow on Monday, the 2nd of May. So between now and tomorrow, GFS is showing that there will be quite a bit of rainfall in sections of the Dominican Republic, but not showing a whole lot of rainfall for other surrounding areas. But there will be some rainfall from this. And then as we head to between now and Tuesday, uh, we're seeing that it's really portions of the South Caribbean and the Dominican Republic that are going to be experiencing the most rain rainfall and out in the Atlantic we see that area there where we have some of those burgundy shades that is a lot of rainfall but obviously that is offshore so no reason to be concerned about that however let's go ahead and take a look at what is going to be expected between now and the this coming Saturday on the 7th of May and so we are seeing here that sections over in the eastern Pacific and South Caribbean will be getting quite a bit of rainfall so a lot of rainfall expected for those areas some areas of central america costa rica panama uh, as we're going to be heading throughout this week and other areas of south america as well can anticipate quite a bit of rainfall that's going to be induced by that itch or the intertropical convergence zone so that is what the gfs is showing and let's take a look at euro so for between now and tuesday but first we have between now and tomorrow on monday the second of the month and the euro is showing that portions of southern Dominican Republic will be experiencing the most rainfall in the region. So other areas can expect maybe an inch of rainfall or near an inch between now and tomorrow. But as we head to between now and Tuesday on the 3rd of May, we're seeing that mainly just an inch or just over an inch expected for most areas. And remember, this is a total accumulated precipitation. So this is not what is going to be happening in like a day or an hour. So it's uh, between now and Tuesday. All right, guys, and now let's go ahead and take a look at other conditions that are present. So let's go ahead and take a look at that ocean temperature map. And so we are seeing that temperatures are warming up in the Atlantic. The Caribbean is pretty warm over in the Eastern Pacific, very warm, 31 degrees over there. And the Gulf of Mexico is getting there. So we see that the Bay of Campeche is definitely on its way and all of that heat is making its way up to the north so things are going to get warmer as we head towards the summer which begins in the latter part of june and to think that june is next month is pretty crazy i mean a couple weeks ago i felt like it was just january and now we are almost uh, at the middle of this year it's pretty crazy guys all right so now let's go ahead now and 
take a look at the El Nino Southern Oscillation. So we are in a La Nina and take a look at this value here, minus one degrees Celsius. So things are pretty cool over there. We have a nice La Nina. So on this sea surface temperature anomaly map, we can see that highlighted blue area. That is what our La Nina is. The blue represents that uh, temperatures are lower than normal. And we can clearly see that on this map. It's pretty distinct. So... I mean, as we're going to be heading into the season, La Nina is expected to persist, which is going to favor more tropical cyclone activity in the Atlantic. And so later this month, we should get Noah's prediction for the hurricane season, and we'll see what they are calling for. But most likely, it will be an above average hurricane season. So it's really just the numbers that I am anticipating here. All right, guys. And so now let's go ahead and take a look at the vertical shear. So what it is like throughout the year so this graph here where we have that black line that represents what usually happens and the blue is what is currently happening and so we're seeing that for the Caribbean it is above that mean or that average line and that indicates that the shear is kind of stronger than normal in the region however we're seeing that as we're going to be heading into June and throughout the summer months it is expected to be relatively low uh, not very impactful but of course the peak is about September late August going into about mid-September thereabouts because once we have a decrease in that vertical shear uh, once it's not very strong then that means that we will likely see more activity taking place because the shear basically interrupts tropical cyclones as they're trying to form cut off their thunderstorms and eventually dissipates them and to a wider view now to the tropical Atlantic so we are seeing that right now it is a little bit below normal where we have that blue line right there so Again, as we're going to be heading into the season, the shear is going to gradually decrease because this is the most favorable time of year that we see development. I mean, that's the point of it being the hurricane season between June and November. But there are other factors such as the ocean temperature and dry air intrusion that also influence tropical cyclones. So we will see what happens then. And I want to point out something that we should really take with a little grain of salt right now, but the GFS was being consistent about something trying to develop in the Caribbean and within mid-May. So I wouldn't be surprised if we have May development, but I mean in the Caribbean, uh, that's not something you always hear about. So that would be a little bit interesting to see, but uh, we'll have to see what happens because we're talking about a two-week uh, prediction and usually things are off because of course weather changes inevitably and we just have to wait and see but I will keep you posted on that and of course I will incorporate it in future videos if there is the need to but aside from that that is really it for this update video and if you found it to be quite informative please give a thumbs up and you can also share your thoughts with me in the comments or ask a question I will try to respond as best and as soon as I can and of course remember to always be with wise.